Hi everyone, welcome back. You're watching Harv Video Audit Stuff. Today we go through my 10 best FCPFX plugins in no particular order, which are just some of the very best value plugins for Final Cut out there. They are always pretty good at doing deals, so be sure to check them out. And if you do enjoy this content, be sure to drop a like and please hit that subscribe button. That's the best way to support the channel. Let's do it. So of course we start with the finishing plugin. And let me be clear, this is not a plugin for grading your footage. This is one that you would apply over the top of an entire project to finish it. So when you shoot footage in log, this footage, for example, is Canon log, you would apply your lookup table before. And I'm going with the Phantom Array Look LUTs, uh, and it's the Utopia one, which I like the most. When I apply it, you can see it looks quite warm, too warm. So delving into the menu, you can see that you get lots of presets with finishing plugin. Personally, I would just stick with the default and edit it yourself. It's always going to be better that way, in my opinion. I've prepared a few tweaks to this version, and if I apply it, you can see it cools down the shadows a bit. It's still a little bit extreme. It's not how I would normally grade. Looking at the interface, you can see there are a ton of different controls. You've got levels, vibrancy, detail, softening, saturation, hue. There's so much here. Let me show you some of the coolest ones. I really love this feature here where, where you can adjust the detail in the shadows, mid tones or highlights. And I like just adding it to the highlights. It's such a, such a nice way of adding just a tiny bit of sharpening. It's very subtle. Another cool feature it has is this blockbuster look, which I haven't used in this example because it's quite extreme. But it, yeah, if you're looking for the teal, and orange kind of look, this gives it to you in spades. This plugin is also for if you need to make minor tweaks to your composition, maybe you need to crop in a tiny bit and tweak it, you can add things like thirds, which is this, this is just really handy thing to have in a plugin. There you go, that's a really quick whistle stop tour of the finishing plugin. It just gives you so much control for so little money. It's really quite cool. Warp transitions are some super cool transitions. You've got three different examples here that you get in the pack and they're all pretty incredible. Let's just drop them into the sequence. I'll, I'll show you the sequence, what we've got so far. You can see we've got this, some drums, some vocals, a little uh, gimbal shot, uh, back to the vocals, and then back to the drums. This is gonna look kind of inappropriate for this video because, well, you know, I, I filmed and edited the video, so it might be a bit over the top, but, but let's, you know, what the hell, let's just do it anyway. I'm gonna drop the directional warp in here, in between the drumming and the vocal. Let's put, actually, let's move it, let's move it here, just going from the vocals into this gimbal shot. And then I'll go a warp in there and a warp out here and see how that looks. So the first one coming up is the directional warp, which is gonna do exactly what you expect. Kind of stretch the footage in one direction, looks really cool. Then you have the warp in and the warp out. The sci-fi nerd in me loves this kind of stuff. Keyframe replacer might not seem like the most interesting bundle from FCPFX, but you can basically get hundreds of presets of keyframe replacements with and without motion blur. So you can apply these to anything and they're actually really cool and really useful. Here you can see just a couple of examples, really simple examples just with text. Obviously apply it to anything you like, really get creative. It can save you a lot of time. Not the most interesting, but these can be really handy. Next is the list plugin, which is very useful for things like product reviews where you've got loads to say about a product and you just need a bit of visual support. So here goes. The things that I like the best about the list plugin are the fact that it pushes me this way to make room for the list. And it's so easy to use. You just drag and drop. It looks really good, and this is all customizable. And like all other FCP effects, it's cheap. Super cheap and good value. Next, we have the Vignette plugin, which is amazing and something I use on almost everything I shoot. This is probably the best Vignette plugin I've ever used. So now I'm going to hand you over to Future Half to demonstrate. Oh, wait. Thank you, Past Half. I'm going to pause you there. And as you can see, I've loaded an instance of the vignette plugin on top. And it it's interestingly, it, it's not an effect that you load onto the clip. It's actually an adjustment layer that you load on top of the clip. Um, so that's kind of that's kind of handy. It keeps it separate and um, you can load it onto 
your whole project if you want to. As you can see, there are tons of options that we've got. So if I click up here, we can preview the area, which won't be affected by our vignette. And of course, we can change the angle, opacity, curvature, width, height, feather, all of those kind of things. I'm not going to bother right now. I'm just going to show you the coolest things that this plugin can do. First of all, we've got this flicker and pulse, which if I turn them up and then play the clip, you can see what they do. They're doing some quite crazy things, but obviously that's quite extreme. Right now I'm going to turn the preview off and show you what else it can do. So say I want to add a traditional vignette where I darken just the corners. I can come down here and I've got the brightness and this gives us a really nice looking, really, really nice looking vignette, very traditional. But a really cool thing that I love is that you can adjust the inside and the outside separately. And this means we can do some really cool things. So let's take this inside brightness. This has become a favorite of mine. So instead of darkening the corners, I'm just adjusting the, the inside brightness. And it kind of just gives, in this shot, it gives me a bit more of a glow. And it basically makes my light look higher power than it really is. There's some other really cool things we can do with this. So let me just adjust the contrast down slightly and the saturation up and we get this crazy looking shot that I don't think I would use, but pretty cool looking. And you can do the reverse and you can say desaturate around the vignette and that really draws attention to the inside. Again, not something I would use, but you know, maybe just a little bit draws the attention into the center of the frame. And then other really cool things we get are you can defocus and this is the closest to say a lens blur and that can give us a really extreme result or we can just use this subtly, whatever suits you. And then we get into the really crazy looking effects so we can do a color blur and this to me looks a little bit like a 70s TV. We've also got this angle blur which blurs things in a, in a, in a kind of linear way. And then we've also got a circular blur, which is really crazy looking. And then the channel blur, which is a really unique look. I've never really seen this before. And aside from all of these things, we can adjust the colors in the outside and inside separately, the shadows, midtones, and highlights. There's just so much to get your teeth into. It's simply the best vignette plugin I've ever tried. Attention Grabber, as the name suggests, gives you tools for grabbing your attention like this pointer, which, you know, they're all very customizable. And then there's this attention grabber shape, which I think is particularly cool. For me, this is going to be most useful for product B-roll where there's not too much movement in the shot. Works best with those lockdown product shots. Shifter from FCPFX is another bundle of really good transitions. You can choose whether you have motion blur or not, and there are loads, absolutely loads. And they're really good. Let me show you a few. Let's add left to this one and let's add down to this one. Cool, let's check it out. Of course, usually it's best to follow the motion of the shot with your transition, which I haven't done particularly well here, but there you go, it's just an example. Being a pasty Brit, I've long since been a fan of the Skin Smoother plugin from FCPFX, and now there is a version two. Whilst I loved the first version, it was a little cumbersome, the fact that you had to scroll through a number of different skin colors to find the one which closely matched yours. Luckily, now it's far, far better. Let me show you. So I've positioned the Skin Smoother plugin after our grading plugins, and what we're gonna do is, firstly, we're gonna add a color mask. Then we're going to take the dropper tool and just drag on a large area of skin tone there. Obviously I don't want to overlap any hair at all. And that's it. Of course we can view the masks and see how much of the area we've actually captured. There's a little bit, a bit over here on the left but that won't be noticeable. So I've isolated quite a lot and now we can start editing. So firstly we can do the smoothing which you can go overboard so easily. In fact I'm just going to zoom in here. Handsome, okay, let's start smoothing. So I'm just gonna add a little bit. Obviously we're really zoomed in here, so any smoothing is quite exaggerated. So I'm gonna add a little bit of smoothing and then I'm gonna turn the overall mix down so it's actually not that, not affecting it that much. So that's with and without, with and without. Very subtle, I could actually dial it up a tiny bit more. Okay, I'm just gonna make a couple of other adjustments to improve things. 
Let's brighten the skin up just a touch. And there's lots of control here so you can really fine tune. It's worth playing around with and really nailing what looks good on your skin tones because that way, every time you shoot something different, you can just copy your settings across and then use the dropper tool, which should calibrate really well with the shooting conditions. So I'm really happy with this. The old version was good. The new version is just something else. Next, we have simply the finest sharpening plugin I have ever used, and it's called Sharpener. So let's drag it on. And as you can see, the interface is huge. The amount of parameters you have to play with are just is mind boggling. So I'm not going to go through it right now. Instead, let me show you a before and after to see what you think. So there we can see before and after. And that's what this plugin does the best. It does amazing sharpening in an incredibly subtle way. Do yourself a favor and switch to the sharpener. Don't use the one built into Final Cut. It's not good. And then we have the old faithful white balance plugin from FCPFX. It just works. So let's drop it on. I'm going to use this clip because I've got a color checker in hand. And to me, it looks a little bit warm, but you know, I know that we can just use the white balance plugin to get it really accurate. So I'm just going to use the white selector today, grab the dropper and click on the white and see how that does. That's much nicer. And let's just undo that. What also you can do is if you use the dropper to click on the middle gray, that will be better for skin tones on the whole. Again, you can really dive into white balance and do some quite clever things with shadows, mid tones, that kind of thing. For me, it's it's a one and done plugin and it just works. It's just really good and just a good thing to have in your arsenal. Here's the before and after and what an improvement. I use this on most of my projects. And just a few honourable mentions from the FCPFX range that I didn't get round to. I also really like the Type Designer. All of their lower third packs, which I've been using all throughout this video. The Animated Titles Pack. And their Social Media Plugin. And that's it for now. Thank you so much for hanging out with me today. If you're not already subscribed to my channel, then I'd love it if you could just hit the blob on this side. I've got a large back catalogue of videos about video on this channel, of which YouTube recommends this one for you, and the one below is my most recent upload. Until next time, let's help each other out and shoot better video. See you guys.